Peace. How y'all doing? This is Zaza Ali. Today is Saturday, August the 24th. I pray that this message reaches you all in the best of health, spirit, and mind. I'm doing really good. I wanted to do a quick um, video for Facebook and Instagram to promote the Science of Sex workbook, as well as to thank all of you guys who have supported so far. I'm very humbled um, and honored by the outrageous support that, you know, um, I have received in regards to this workbook. Um, for one, you know, the support feels really good. And then also because I know that this is a conversation and a topic that is um, extremely needed, um, definitely undervalued, and uh, most certainly not had enough. So um, to honor you guys, I wanted to kind of uh, talk, embellish a little bit some of the things that I talk about in the workbook as well as to promote it to my um, pages. So First of all, if you want to get a copy, you can get the ebook as well as pre order the hard copy of the workbook, The Science of Sex, through my uh, website, and I will post the link in the description. Um, but the reason why this topic is important, when we look at the conditions of our society, we've produced, obviously, we've produced, you know, greatness, right? We don't, I don't need to, uh, you know, underscore uh, what's already known <clears throat> or state the obvious, excuse me. Um, but when we look at, a lot of the trauma and the pain and the suffering that we see in the world um, that is carried out by human beings. This process was started out between the connection between a man and a woman. And a lot of our issues, um, particularly with black people and then particularly in America in general, comes from a lack of respect, a lack of understanding and a lack of discipline and patience when it comes to the subject of sex. So in the workbook, um, on page 10, one of the questions that I ask is, is your sexual behavior based more around emotional connection, physical ecstasy, or loneliness? And this is something we're going to talk about in the workshop tomorrow, um, seeing yourself through relationship patterns, which you can still get access through on my website as well. But a lot of us are actually seeking to fill voids through our sexual activity. And this is why you see now with a lot of women, um, you know, trying to weaponize their sexuality, so to speak. Um, real last B, give a F about a, I don't, I don't want to cuss because I don't want to um, get my, um, my video. I don't want them to flag it as, you know, uh, as far as the uh, monetization process. But, um, you know, that kind of mindset comes as a derivative of women constantly being harassed, constantly being abused, constantly being, you know, uh, taken for granted. Um, so now the sexuality has, is being weaponized in order to turn the, you know, turn the, the tide, so to speak, and turn that energy back on men. Um, so it's that aspect of it. It's, you know, this loneliness and this need to fill voids um that a lot of our uh, a lot of us excuse me express ourselves sexually and then just purely out of pleasure purely for physical ecstasy um but i think that question particularly for women is something that we really need to explore um i was writing in my notes earlier today for the class i'm doing tomorrow and um one of the uh, questions that I put together was, you know, identify the temporary relationships that you knew in your mind and in your spirit were not going to go anywhere. But once you actually took the relationship to the next level, meaning had, you know, intercourse um, and took it to a sexual level, now there is this connection that, you know, especially for women, we feel like, oh my God, I gave this man my body, or now I've invested more than I should have, or, you know, because the feeling was so good, now things about this person that I knew wouldn't work as far as a long-term relationship, or I knew it wouldn't work with him as far as, you know, ha having a family, or, um, you know, creating a life, having a business partnership, etc. I knew none of those things would work, but the minute that we had a sexual connection or started to um, have intercourse, now I've become connected to this man in a different type of way. Now I've become emotionally attached to this man because I've given him a part of my body that I know, even if it's just in my subconscious mind or in the, the recesses of my mind, I know my value is worth more than this. I know my body is worth more than this. So sometimes this is why women get crazy, you know, after that 
the relationship has turned into something sexual now, um, especially when there is no real deep emotional connection. There's no real deep spiritual or mental connection. Now there is a backlash, so to speak, because internally women know that they deserve more. Women know that they deserve better, um, but they may not necessarily be, uh, you know, uh, uh, projecting that asking for that directly, obviously, um, and either even carrying themselves in a way that is able to express that to a man without, you know, with it being said and without it being said. Um, so I think it's important for us as a culture to really start to think about those type of things. I wrote a list and this list even isn't even complete. I just wrote a, just dotted down some real quick things off the top of my head, but as far as problems, problem related things in our society that are directly connected to, um, sex, um, teenage and unwanted pregnancy, sexually transmitted disease, rape and molestation. Um, a lot of times we look at rape and molestation as like a subset. That's not really a part of the sexual culture. That's a subset, but actually that is a part of the culture. It is a derivative of the male female dichotomy, right? Um, a lot of times, you know, men and women only really interact in a sexual capacity. Um, and I think this society, you know, sets that up and permeates that to where we don't really have, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, platonic connections, right? Able to value and see ourselves beyond just sex. Sometimes when I'm walking around, you know, and I might be leaving a yoga class or on my way to work out or something. So I'm dressed like I'm working out and I see men and I've, I've always, you know, known this. I know the energy. I feel it when it's coming, when it's coming, but I can just feel a man's energy, his sexual energy, just completely directed towards me. And it's a very invasive type of energy. It's not like, oh, wow, that's a, you know, I, I think she's beautiful or, um, you know, admiring in a respectful type of way. It's animalistic. It's, ooh, I want to hit that. You know what I'm saying? Without ever saying anything to me, there's no real, you know, conversation or none of that. I can just feel that energy being thrust on me, right? Um, this is something that men have to be mindful of. And sometimes men say, well, you know, I tried to talk to this woman and she, you know, she had a, she got rude or whatever. But like women have to deal with that stuff all the time. It gets irritating and it gets, frust it gets frustrating. Um, so sometimes you get the tail end of that type of energy to where women are just tired of having to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so sexually transmitted diseases, rape, molestation, trauma, and emotional pain. Who, who, what? child or what young woman or what young uh, uh, grown woman wants to be a jump off. And this is one of the title, the terms that I use in the actual, um, in the workbook, just to identify and to, to start thinking about that term. What woman ever desires to be a jump off? Now, somebody might say, oh, that, that, that word is mutually exclusive. It goes for men and women, but let's, you know, let's skip the semantics and just be honest. For the majority of the culture in the consciousness, we talk about jump offs when it comes to being women. Hit it and quit it. What woman aspires to that? Now, you have women out here that uh, try to pretend like they are, that try to own that, so to speak, like the video we watched in Toxic Femininity. You know, they called us hoes for so long that now we're owning, that now we're owning it. So trauma and emotional pain. Um and this is the thing about when you have sex with another human being, you open up different portals of yourself um, that you may not have intended, most likely didn't intend, um, opening up different portals of yourself. You say, oh, it's just casual sex or, oh, I just hit that. OK, well, for some men that may, um, you know, they may be able to do that. But for women, um, there's this new thing now where women are saying we're sexual beings. Right. I hear that a lot. I see that a lot online. Um well, obviously, because we all have sex, I mean, lions are sexual beings, if that's the case. You know what I'm saying? Women are emotional beings. Um, and I only specify emotional because obviously we're mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical beings, right? All of those things. Um, but particularly, women obviously are emoters um, and emotionally intuitive species, which is our superpower. Um, but that's been turned against us. We've turned it against ourselves and then it's been turned against us. And now, you know, we're identifying more so as sexual beings, but 
you are an emotional being and the way that you express your emotion, emotions, one of the ways you express your emotions is through sex. So now we have this thing where under the guise of sexual liberation, we are promoting this, you know, this free to do liberal, whatever I want to do, which is fine and dandy because we all have the right to make our own decisions and choices that you have to live with as well. Um, <clears throat> but it's not really realistic when you think about, you know, first of all, skin to skin touch um, has a, a complete um, uh, impact on your emotions, on your neurological pathways, what happens in your brain um, when you're actually touching skin to skin, um, that whole science of it, right? And then also emotionally different portals are open up inside of you, uh, in you where you are now um, attracted to this man on a or this woman on a different type of level. Um, so this idea of casual sex while you can cut one part of yourself off. You can turn the emotional part of yourself off and maybe engage in casual sex, or you can turn the spiritual part of yourself off and engage in casual sex, but you cannot be a full, complete, vibrant, loving, um, abundant minded and spirited person and have casual sex. You can't. So, um, uh, unwanted children, right? And unwanted children and unplanned pre pregnancies is a breeding ground for criminal activity, for the prison industrial complex. All the things that we get mad at the system and, you know, corporations and capitalism and the white man and the powers that be and the elitists, all these things that we pinpoint towards them and rightfully so. Um, but there's also behaviors that are taking place in our community that directly lend to um, you know, those, those, uh, uh, systems and feeding those systems, um, with our people. So there is a comment in the, um, I'm almost about to hit 15 minutes and I'm going to stay on my time mark in the science of sex workbook. There is a comment, um, that I wrote, one does not build great civilizations that withstand the test of time without abstaining just as much as they indulge. I don't understand why the words celibacy and abstinence are like curse words in our community. I don't understand why the women and the men, men in particular, but women as well, do not promote abstinence and celibacy, do not promote learning how to be alone, do not promote learning how to change the trajectory of how you see men and how you see women so that you can attract a higher standard of relationship, learning how to engage with men and women and put sex on the back burner so that you can actually get to know this person. Ask yourself, how many relationships have you been in, in the past and in the present, that if you had taken time to get the no to know this person before you engaged in sex, that that relationship would have been able to continue uh, uh, um, beyond a, a temporary amount of time? And some of the, a lot of these relationships end up producing children. They end up producing families. They end up producing marriages that if you had actually gotten a chance to take time to know this person before you gave them your body, before you exchanged fluids, before you made it real, real, took time to get to, to know them on a spiritual, mental, and emotional level, if those relationships would have proceeded or persisted, excuse me. So I think it's time that we have a real serious, spiritually minded conversation about the topic of sex. That's why I wrote this wrote this workbook. It's available in ebook format on my website, and you can also pre-order the physical copy, which will be shipped out on September the 25th. Okay. Much love to you guys. Um, I'll be doing more videos to kind of expound on different topics that I talk about when it comes to the science of sex, because this is a very big, far reaching conversation, but it's definitely one that needs to be had. Peace and love.